Welcome to another episode of Dot Com Fur, and this episode is, I mean, titled, Where are all the regulars? Because everybody's gone. I mean, there's no Ed, there's no Steven, there's no Michael. It's probably It's probably late, man, but yeah. It's all new people here, mostly new people, so we have a whole new crowd. John Chow, already on my Twitter pick. Three minutes later, and he uh, gets uh, 30 hits off of my uh, my Twitter account. That's pretty awesome. There you yeah. go. George is the, uh, the CEO of Lens, and I've been trying to convince him to, uh, after fur is over, we'll go to the uh, Lens next door and we'll get some, we'll have him order a coffee and then try not to pay for it and see what the employees say. That's actually not going to happen, John, because I've actually taken a page out of your book. Like, uh, if my lips are moving, I'm making money. That's exactly. So I've learned that from reading your blog. So there's no way. <laughs> you should try. I think it'll be a great. I mean, I want yeah. this is something I want to see. I want to see. Can the CEO of Blends go and get coffee while paying for it? You have actually a really warped sense of humor. Has anybody actually accused you of that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I think that's a great idea. I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that show up on Johnny Carson or yeah, the Night yeah. Show. You know? Yeah, and get me fired. I'm Josh Reimer at JoshReimer.com. And I'm teaching you how to get famous while I get famous too. That's so, right. Yeah, I make YouTube videos with a YouTube partner and I tell people what works and what doesn't on YouTube. Alright, so what? give us a quick tip. What works on YouTube? Giveaways. <laughs> Doing contests and giveaways gets people's attention and gets them to like you. So you gotta buy people's love. Buy people's love. Love is for sale on the internet. Uh, who would have known? Who would have thought that? Dot com! <laughs> okay. Great advice, Josh. Thank you. Okay. Hey guys, ever since I got my Apple iPad, I've been receiving a lot of questions about is it any good? Like, uh, what is it for? Does it replace my laptop? That kind of stuff. And after playing with it for a week, I came to the conclusion that the iPad is a wondrous device for consuming media. And that's really, I want to show you, give you a little demonstration of how you can consume media with the iPad. Right. First of all, as you can see, I have all my news information here on my first plane. I got Bloomberg, BBC, USA Today, totally free. I mean, I pretty much know anything that's happening in the world just by clicking on USA Today, National Public Radio, China Daily, Newsreader, and magazines such as Popular Science, which I have here somewhere. I'll give an example. New Age Magazine. This is the latest way you consume magazine. This is the iPad edition of Popular Science. Basically, page by page, give you access. You can read, read more information. So you just scroll down. It's easier to read the data. You know the picture changes. You want to see the picture? Just tap. See the full picture. You want to see the table of content? Two finger push up. Brings you the table of content. Magazine cover. What's news? The what's news section. And, a whole bunch of magazines that come back with iPad version, but what if you already have a certain magazines that haven't been as advanced, say, I love car and drivers, they don't have an iPad version yet. In that case, there's an app called Xeno. Xeno makes all these ads, makes all these magazines available for your iPad. And they're not as interactive with the popular science ones, but they basically reproduce the iPad, they, they reproduce the magazine itself. Just by just for downloading, downloading the app, you get the current issue of Car and Driver, Mac World, and National Geographic for free. So, there's 15 bucks a magazine just for, for free. It's limited interactivity, like you can watch the, uh, read the magazine, just like the way the magazine looks. By tapping on here, you can bring up the individual pages to, you can click navigation. By clicking on here, you can bring up all the individual navigation pages so you can see click index. There's also the table of content style, five line features. Interactivity, this button, this brings up all the photos that they took of the car. So in, in that way, this is somewhat interactive. It's not interactive as the, uh, uh, the public science, but better than a magazine. The cool thing is, you can buy any magazine that Xeno represents. Like if, for example, the Car and Driver magazine here is $4.95 for an issue, or for $8, you get the whole year subscription. So um, eight bucks for a whole year of Car and Driver, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a really good deal. Right? And you're also saving, I think all the trees you're saving too. Right? Environmentally friendly. And you'll get it before the newsstand because the instant it publishes, 
it sent wirelessly to your iPad. So you beat everyone to it, so you can tell your friend. Did you see this one's test? And they go, where? Mary's not even out yet. You got it. <laughs> Another way for uh, to consume media is books. Now, the iBookstore is one way, but you know, I have an Amazon, I have an account on Amazon, and I have a lot of books that I purchased from Amazon. It just so happened that Amazon made a, a Kindle app for the iPhone, I mean, for the iPad. And the nice thing about the, uh, the Kindle app for the iPad is that it allows me total access to my Kindle library. So all the books that I purchased on Amazon is now available on my iPad, and it's available on my Kindle as well. And as for people saying that stuff like, you know, what about the glare from the screen that doesn't fatigue the eye? I have so far read a full novel on here and it's not, it's not caused any eye strain whatsoever. And in certain books, reading the books on the iPad is so much more better than reading it from a Kindle, especially if it's a, a textbook or a book that doesn't require, that doesn't do long, uh, linear reading. Any book that requires you to browse to find chapters so much faster on the iPad than on the Kindle. And the example here, I guess, would be the, uh, the Bible. On the, uh, on the iPad, you can navigate by, it's so much faster, like table content. Here's the, uh, the Old Testament, Book of Joshua, yes, I guess, Touch, chapter 15, verse 3, and, you, and you're there. This, you can do this in a matter of seconds. It would have taken like almost a minute to do on a Kindle because you're using a little joystick trying to move the hand around. So, reading a book is no problem, but uh, when it's anything that requires navigation, the iPad has its beat. The iPad has replaced my Kindle. What it hasn't replaced is my laptop. You know, for actually doing work and producing content, uh, this thing doesn't replace a laptop. But for consuming media, this thing is absolutely fantastic. A lot of people try to read books on the computer. They say it can't be done. The reason it can't, it can't be done is because it's a form factor. People just, it's just not natural to read what's on in front of you. People like reading the way they read. You know, they read like this. And this form factor allows you to read it like a book. And so for consuming media, whether you're watching TV, watching video, reading a book, this is pretty much the ultimate way to do it.